What's this? A letter for me. Welcome to another episode of Remember the Great Sports Through the Mail Thursdays. Today I'm going to share with you, as you saw in the intro, a theme video of returns from Atlanta Falcons football greats. And I'm really excited to share these with you because all three of these players were Atlanta Falcons all-time greats and pro bowlers in their own right. So let's just get right into this. And the first one is returned from Georgia. Surprise, surprise from Atlanta Falcons center, Jeff Van Note on one, two, a third, and also a fourth, featuring Jack Rudine. And um, I know Rudine signs through the mail. Unfortunately, if you've watched my channel over the last year or so, or two years, um, I've stumbled across a lot of vintage football cards from this era, but unfortunately, because of where I live in Missouri, none of them ever have Chiefs cards in them. It's like I, I find these, and it's like, oh well, the Chiefs. Well, you get, you know, you don't get those. Those have already been taken out. So, unfortunately, my collection of Kansas City Chiefs cards are pretty slim from this era. So, this very well may be the only version of this card that I have. I'm gonna have to look. I perhaps might have a second one, so I could send a blank one to Rudine. And, you know, maybe resend to Van Note in the future again. But let me tell you about Jeff Van Note and his career in football and the transition that he made when he became a pro. Jeff Van Note actually played his high school football in Kentucky. And he went on to play at the University of Kentucky. But he was a linebacker slash running back. Oh, I'm sorry, he was a defensive end slash running back. So he was a two-way player from 66 to 68 with the Kentucky Wildcats. Well, he was drafted by the Falcons in the 11th round, 269th overall in the 69 draft. Well, under head coach Norm Van Brocklin, he did not play very long at linebacker, and Van Brocklin moved him to center hiking the ball. Well, at this point in his career, Van Note had never played the position his entire career. He was a running back on the offensive side. So, despite the inexperience at the NFL level, Van Note established himself as one of the finest centers in the NFL, making six Pro Bowls and helping newly young Atlanta Falcons franchise through his career. His 18-year career tenure with the Falcons is one of the 25 longest in NFL history and is the second longest while staying with one franchise. He played 246 games over this stretch and in his 225 he was a starter. During his entire career he only missed four entire games as an NFL lineman. The Falcons retired Van Notes jersey in 1986 he would be voted as the fans' favorite franchise player in 1991. Van Note would also be inducted into the Georgia Sports Hall of Fame in 1999. Well, after his playing career, his long tenure with the Falcons, he would then go on to embark on a broadcasting career for not just the Atlanta Falcons, but also his alma mater, Kentucky Wildcats. So he would be in the broadcast view booth and on radio in the Atlanta area all the way through the 1990s. He also helped out with the Tennessee Oilers uh, after they moved from Houston in, in the uh, Tennessee area for a season or two. And he would continue his time with Kentucky and Middle Tennessee State University all the way through 2008. So very, very cool. You know, he's a full-time, four-time All-NFC, six-time Pro Bowler, has all of these noteworthy things. I mean, he has so many games played as an NFL lineman. You know, I've said this so many times on this channel before. Why is this guy not in the Hall of Fame? I mean, this is this is one of the best at the position for the entire decade. I mean, you could argue one of the best centers. Now, unfortunately, he played for the Atlanta Falcons, and that very well could be why. He's not in the Hall of Fame because it wasn't, you know, the Dallas Cowboys, it wasn't the Miami Dolphins, it wasn't the Pittsburgh Steelers, etc. from that era. But one could probably argue if he would have played for one of those teams, he may have even had the opportunity to become who he became as a, you know, offensive lineman as a center in the NFL. So very happy to add this Atlanta Falcons legend to the collection. 
hopefully we can get run day to sign that as well in the near future. All right, so this next one, this one is very cool. This guy, hands down, if you're an Atlanta Falcons fan from the early 1980s, you're going to know this guy. And this is none other than William Andrews on one, the second as a team leader card, the third, which is towards the end of his career right there, and a fourth team card as well. And William Andrews was probably in the early part of the 1980s, from 80 to 84-ish, one of the top running backs in the game. So let me tell you about William Andrews and his great career, albeit very short. So William Andrews played at the prestigious Auburn University with future NFL running backs, James Brooks and Joe Cribbs, also in the backfield with him. He was selected in the third round that low in 1979 by the Atlanta Falcons. Primarily, he was used as a blocking fullback type of running back in his college career. He, he was not the runner, so to speak. He was excelled at blocking you know, and being a pass catcher mainly out of the backfield. When he started his first year, he would make an immediate impact, finishing with 160 yards in the NFL debut, defeating the Saints in his first game, 40-34. to Playing in 15 games, Andrews finished his rookie season with over 1,000 yards rushing and was named to the all-rookie team. The following year, 1980, he would help lead the Falcons to a 12-4 and record. So they were good that year. And they would win the NFC West Division. He finished the season with 1,308 yards that year rushing, averaging 4.9 per carry, 51 caught passes for 456 yards. This would be the first of four straight Pro Bowl seasons for William Andrews. While the Falcons' record slipped in 81, he would rush for 1,300 yards and score a career-high 12 touchdowns that year for the Falcons. That year, Andrews would become one of the first running backs in the NFL, along with Tony Dorsett, John Brockington, Otis Anderson, and Earl Campbell to gain at least 1,000 yards in each of his first three seasons. I mean, that, that's a heck of a group. Andrews was also a fourth in receptions that year in 1981. So, I mean, just think of this, this weapon in the backfield. The guy can block, the guy can run, the guy can catch. I mean, it's... It's just amazing what this guy did. Well, 1982, they had the strike-shortened season, but despite that, he still rushed for over 1,076 yards that year for the Falcons. Well, 1983, watch out. He had his best season yet, statistically. He was second in the NFL in rushing with 1,567 yards, second in yards per game, with an average of 97.9 and caught for 59 passes for 609 yards. He also finished second in yards from scrimmage with 1,000, 2,176. At season's end, he was named All-Pro by both the Sporting News and the Newspaper Enterprise Association. In 1984, coming off his best season in 1983, you know that's that's what this card is right here, the team leaders, and that eight, you know that other card there. Unfortunately, he sustained a serious knee injury while in preseason, and that pretty much ended his career. He missed all of the 1984 and 85 seasons, and then attempted a comeback after those seasons, and only rushed for 214 yards at that point. And for 1986, the time that he came back, he spent the majority of the season playing tight end because of his good blocking skills. So in his prime, he was arguably the most bruising, powerful running back in the NFL. Hall of Famer Ronnie Lott later would state that the head-on collision that he and Andrews had between them and the 49ers was the hardest hit he had ever received in his NFL career. This is Ronnie Lott, the Hall of Famer, saying this guy jarred him, okay? In addition to leading the NFL in yards from scrimmage in 81, Andrews also finished in the top four in that category three more times. 
He was named the Falcons Player of the Year in both 81 and 83. To, <clears throat> and to celebrate his career in 2004, the Atlanta Falcons retired his number. In 1996, he was inducted into the Georgia Sports Hall of Fame. So this is, you know, one of those guys that he was a star. I mean, just, just imagine one of the best running backs in the NFL playing for a not-so-good team. I mean, they did make the playoffs that one year. But imagine in the prime of your career, the best season that you have. The next year, you go to training camp, and it's all over. That's what happened to William Andrews. So thank you very much, Mr. Andrews. Your autographs will always be cherished. And I'm going to see if any of these other guys might sign as well on that card there, as you're a good start to it. And finally, this was a pretty exciting return, and I opened this before the, the thing, but I received another request from one of the best cornerbacks in Atlanta Falcons history. And they were like, Deion Sanders? No, I wish. But we'll talk about this guy as kind of the Deion Sanders of the 70s with the Falcons, and that is Roland Lawrence on two of two. And I included index cards because I know Mr. Lawrence, you know, doesn't like to sign a whole lot. He's kind of, you know, off and on about signing. So I put some index cards in there to protect them. And he also signed those, surprisingly. So I guess I can't say that he doesn't like signing. But he wrote, for football fan, take care, Roland Lawrence. Which I think that is really cool. Really, really cool that he signed it that way. And this one is really nice because one of the things that I typically do in a letter that I send to a player that's handwritten, if it's not somebody from my era, I usually mention that, you know, my father, you know, remember watching him play. Well, he personalized an index card to me saying, Joel, take care, my friend, and God bless. Rowan Lawrence, P.S., tell your dad I said hello. Stay safe. And he put a smiley face. So very, very neat that he personalized that um, that index card to me and my father as well, sort of, to my father. So let me tell you about Roland Lawrence and his career with the Atlanta Falcons. So Roland Bay Lawrence, Bay is his nickname, was signed by the Atlanta Falcons from a little NAIA college in Kansas called Tabor College. He played his entire career with the Atlanta Falcons, ranging from 1973 to 1980. He was selected to only one Pro Bowl during his career in 1977, when his famous Grits Blitz defense, widely considered among one of the best in league history, and he had 39 career interceptions throughout his career, which is the most by a Falcons player, which is very surprising when you had Deion Sanders playing there. But I guess Dion didn't play his whole career there, so that makes sense. In 1977, his Pro Bowl career, he accounted for 10 turnovers that year, 7 interceptions, and 3 fumble recoveries as a cornerback in the backfield for the Falcons. In total, he appeared in 118 games for the Atlanta Falcons, had a career of 39 interceptions, like I said, still a team record, and he pretty much was a starter his entire career, with the exception of his first year in the league as a 22-year-old rookie. After 29 years old, Lawrence retired from football, and I'm not really sure what he did after that. I don't have a lot of research done on that subject. Uh, I don't know if he went and played, you know, maybe in the USFL or one of the other leagues, but I'm not really sure after that season at 29 years old what he did. But I'm very, very happy to add Mr. Lawrence's autograph to my collection. It was very, very nice of him to write out those index cards to me. Uh, I am just super excited, you know, like I said, to get, you know, these William Andrews cards back as well. I mean, Andrews is just one of the most underrated players from that decade, in my opinion. And... Here, we'll just do this so we can show the autograph off. It's, it's just amazing the stats that this guy put up, you know, during his playing career. 
you know, with the Atlanta Falcons. And, you know, definitely look at his, you know, page below because I'll definitely link that. And also Jeff Van Note, adding him to the collection as well, you know, to get a few more signed from him that I can get this dual player card signed again and finish off that card because that would be really nice. So I thank you again. I thank Mr. Lawrence. I thank Mr. Andrews. And I thank Mr. Van Note for the time that they spent to sign these. All of these guys are so historic in the history of the Atlanta Falcons franchise. And if you're an Atlanta Falcons fan, I hope you enjoyed this. You know, if you're an autograph collector, I hope you enjoyed it as well. Thank you for joining me for another episode. And as always, happy collecting.